Hello everyone, this is Sir Monch and in this lecture video I'm going to talk about the sexual self or the sexual dimensions of human identity. Particularly I'll talk about topics related to human sexuality, soji, and romantic relationships. This lecture video is part of a lecture video series for GE Understanding the Self. Um, as usual, before we go into the topics, let me present to you um, five questions which will enable you to recall or bring in your prior learning. And I hope that whatever information you can recall, um, I hope that that will interact with the content that I'll be presenting in this lecture video. So first, what's your understanding of the role that biology plays in shaping sexual desires and behaviors? And perhaps aside from biology, um, what's the role of other people, example, your family, community, no? and the media that you're exposed to, social media, for example? What messages or beliefs have you received about sexuality, your sexuality, and the sexuality of others. Let's say, are they saying that homosexuality is a sin? Are they saying that um, there are only two acceptable gender identities, that, that is um, being a man, being a woman? No? Next, have you received any sex education or information about contraception or sexually transmitted infections? So we all know that part of the development of responsibility ng mga emerging adults or even young adults or even adolescents is ang kaning um, sex education for them to be knowledgeable and aware kung unsay ilang responsibilities and also how to protect themselves from, from these infections and also from, let's say, abuses in the context of romantic relationships. Next, how have you navigated differences in sexual desires and communication with romantic partners? I'm sure some of you are already involved or are already engaged in romantic relationships. Um, and perhaps a good question is, um, in practice, how do you manage your differences in sexual desires? Let's say if one is aggressive and the other isn't, how do you go about that? How do you handle that issue? And very common differences in communication styles, conflicts, interpersonal conflicts between or in the context of romantic relationships. How do you manage that? How do you handle that kind of um, that kind of issue? And then fifth one, what they think is the importance of promoting inclusive and affirming attitudes towards diverse sexual orientations and gender identities. Okay, so this is, I believe, a relevant question because we're seeing um, um, greater visibility of LGBT individuals or individuals who associate and identify themselves as part of the LGBT community. So what are, um, given the, this diversity, um, is it important that we acknowledge them? Is it important that we acknowledge that their presence, their sense of selves are valid? So that's a question that we will explore. So these are the contents. No, I'm going to share with you um, some key terms. Also, factors shaping sexual desires and behaviors. Um, we'll explore briefly biological factors, psychological factors, and cultural and social factors. And after that, um, we will go over SOGI. Concerning SOGI, what SOGI means, what SOGI stands for, how complex it is. And also some some sexual education particularly will focus on um, consent and sexual ethics, sexual health and wellness. And we will end this presentation with a brief discussion on romantic relationships. So when we speak of human sexuality and attraction, take note, human sexuality encompasses a broad range of behaviors, preferences, and experiences related to sexual activity and attraction. And speaking of attraction, that refers to the experience of being drawn to or interested in another person. And that can be influenced by several factors, which include um, attractiveness, which include, um, you know, cultural influences and 
these are the things that we will explore in the next slides. Now, the factors affecting human attraction. Why are we drawn to certain people? Why are we drawn to um, certain kinds of characteristics? What are the factors no, that affect us in shaping our, um, in the formation of attraction? Gender and uh, gender identity and sexual orientation are also key aspects of human sexuality that can play a significant role in attraction. That's why we'll have a part in this uh, presentation. We'll have a part for Soji that is um, a discussion, um, uh, a detailed discussion on Soji. Okay. So when it comes to um, biological factors shaping sexual desire, so we have here three common factors that are associated um, under, you know, that belong under this umbrella term, biological factors. So our sexual desires, the way we form attraction with others are influenced by these factors, physical appearance, genetics, hormones. So siempre, people tend to be more attracted to individuals who are considered more conventionally attractive. No, So on some my popular understanding of beauty, no, and some generic understanding of attractiveness. And usually we follow that trend. Now we're also attracted to unsay conventionally attractive. Next, uh, there's a growing evidence to suggest that um, certain genes may be involved in the development of sexual orientation and related traits. So take note, um, sexual orientation is the caning caning pag form ng attraction nato towards other people, whether um, opposite sex or same sex. And there is a growing research evidence nga na ay genetic influences that influence uh, that influence um, the development of sexual orientation, whether you become heterosexual or homosexual. Okay? And then lastly, there are hormones. On summoning hormones, hormones are chemicals produced by endocrine glands, which play a vital role in regulating various bodily functions, including sexual development and behavior. I think the most popular hormone, the most popular hormones, kaning mga sex-related hormones, so in males, we have testosterone. Take note, um, testosterone is also present in female bodies, but only in small amounts. So, ang kaning presence of um, testosterone in male bodies, so ang kadaghanon niya maoy responsible for body mass, um, muscle growth, increased strength, increased endurance, also skin growth, collagen growth, and increased sex drive, you know, being aggressive in terms of sexual desires that's also responsible or that's also made possible by testosterone, um, uh, red blood cell production, and also, siyempre, development of um, male sex organs. So that it... Um, um, let's say the development of you know the penis, etc., and also its functions like sperm production and the manner of I, know, I mean pag erect no ng imong penis that's also made possible by testosterone. Um, in the case of females, ang um mas daghan ang presence sa ila sa female bodies ng estrogen. That's why it's called the female sex hormone. But like testosterone, estrogen is also present in male bodies but only in small amounts. No, um, Estrogen is responsible for the development of primary and secondary sexual characteristics in female bodies. So you have their kanin, uterus and even kanang functions, no? monthly um, kind of menstrual cycle, development of ovaries, breast development, um, when it comes to brain, libido adjustment. So also that's responsible for the regulation of sex drives. Um, what else? Uh, not by other functions, appeal ang bone strength, density, uh, and then anti-aging effect, etc. There's a particular hormone, maybe not that particular, 
um, not that popular, no? Oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone that's produced in the brain. No, there's a particular part in the brain, caning hypothalamus, which in instructs the pituitary gland to produce oxytocin. Ang oxytocin is called is also called love hormone, the love hormone or the cuddle hormone. Why? Because when you are engaged in, for example, um, when you are cuddling with someone, no, kanang ka cuddle mo, ga hug mo, no, um mag embrace embrace mo kanang kanang physical touch okay that triggers the release of oxytocin and the presence of oxytocin in your bloodstream promotes bonding trust generosity and social interaction okay kay naanay mga ginabuhat niya na mga changes sa brains so mo na careful mo ha na for example na amoy let's say ka date no tapos you become closer and closer and then kanang maghag mag-embrace ay delikado na gamay kay gano man kay maskin maghag lang mo ka isa or kadoha katulo so na anay mga reward systems na ma-trigger sa brain made possible by oxytocin which will make you uh more kanang mahimo na kang attracted gajud kaayo sa tao ma-attach na ka sa tao imo na siyang hanap-hanapon okay so that's oxytocin Okay, now going to um the psychological factors. So kato biology man, no? So something related to um the factors sa atong body, no? Associated sa atong bodily functions, bodily characteristics. This time psychological factors, psychological factors shaping our sexual desires and behaviors. So we have here three factors. So sure, ang attraction. Ang sexual desire magdepende man na sa personality. Also, magdepende sa shared interests and values and attachment style. So, let's say um, we have here, individuals tend to be attracted to others who share similar personality traits such as um, openness, consensuousness, and agreeableness. No, Kung magkapariha mo personality, usually oh, makarelate ka kay pariho mo mga batasan. Oh, may mo mong attracted to each other. Though, there are also other people who would say nga kung opposite ang inyong mga batasan, mas mag-complement mo because you somehow complete you know, a piece of a puzzle na missing sa isa. So, that can also be a valid statement for how personality traits work in the shaping of our sexual desires and behaviors. But generally, um people tend to be attracted to someone nga na ay similar na personality traits no and similarly kaning similar shared uh, similar na mga interests that's why we call them shared interests also shared values so people tend to be more attracted to individuals who share similar interests so kung pareho mo mag maglantaw-lantaw sa Netflix so kung pareho mo um, interested sa physical activity ga, ga jog mo or ga exercise mo so kana ganahan mo magluto so you become attracted to those people na pareho mga uh, mga interest and then kaning um last factor attachment style unsa man attachment style um attachment style refers to an individual's typical pattern of relating to others in close relationships so naatay style sa pag-attach sa laing tao so kana ra the way we um the pattern the way we form relationships with other people no in the context of um close relationships so maskin maparomantic man or maskin sa teachers sa friends so kani na factor actually relevant pod ning um attachment styles so in the in the context of psychology um na i daw for attachment styles and try to um find yourself as a modapit okay so we have a secure attachment style so kaning mga tao nga na ay secure attachment style they are those people who can trust fairly easily and also they are those who are attuned to their emotions they can regulate their own emotions control their own emotions and can communicate upsets directly 
lead with cooperative and flexible behavior in relationships. So wala sila issue anang attachment, no? They can handle their emotions well. So people with secure attachment style. Next, we have anxious attachment style. These are uh, people with anxious attachment style uh, tend to have a sensitive nervous system. They struggle communicating their needs directly. So they don't really express their emotions a lot. They tend to act out when triggered. No, So for example, um, kanang on sama ni kanang mag makes partner jealous so kana na medyo praning na siya kadaghan siya mga worry so from the word anxious um these are the people na when they are in the context of relationship or before entering a relationship dag high worry dag high anxiety ah uh, next we have avoidant dismissive no um downplays important ah uh, downplays the importance of relationships so from the term dismissive uh, para sa ila wala ikwenta nang mag uyab uyab or makigrelasyon so kung na ako dire sa classroom okay ra ko ako ra isa okay so wala koy kinahanglan amigohon dire okay kay unsa man dadyon unsa may puyos anang mag amigo amigo or let's say kung sa uyab uyab so ha need ba gyud mag uyab di man need mag uyab kay dapat ko an man ta self reliant or whatsoever so these are the people who tend to have um um kaning people nga those are the statements that would typically come from um people with avoidant dismissive attachment style also they are usually extremely self-reliant no can become more vulnerable when there is a big crisis last one avoidant fearful they are those people who are more dependent in relationships than avoidant dismissive So the opposite, no? They strongly fear rejection and they have low self-esteem. So, murag, um, mo avoid sila relationship, not because they dismiss the idea of relationship, but they are, um, they are afraid of being rejected. Okay, so they have low self-esteem. Gamay ilang lantaw sa ilang kaugalingon. They view themselves negatively and also has high anxiety in relationships. Okay. So asaman mo dapat, no? Asaman asaman ang asaman mo na bilong, secure, anxious, avoidant, dismissive or avoidant fearful. Take note that secure attachment styles according to research conducted in the field of psychology tend to translate into positive and stable relationships kay lagi they're able to communicate their emotions well, no? And they can trust fairly easily. But on the other hand, anxious and avoidant attachment styles kaning tulo may result to more difficulty with intimacy and commitment. No, so sila tong medyo na issue sa pag-establish ng long-lasting relationship. However, so this is something that I need to emphasize. Um, ang atong attachment style is not fixed. Okay, it can change over time with experiences and personal growth. So dili ingon nga um, na akay avoidant fearful attachment style karon. Dili pasabot ana na forever naka na ing ana imong attachment style because people are capable of learning, no? So when people are exposed to um certain models na ala ing ana dai na no, sila say mangita sa salida na ay dapat magtrust or unsa pay mga tips or self-help messages na makita sa social media can you know, can change a person's mind. So, wala may determinism when it comes to attachment styles. Okay? So, but definitely, um, attachment style is a psychological factor that can influence a person's behavior, sexual behavior, and um, attraction. Now, when it comes to culture and social factors, uh, syempre, we understand that different cultures, different societies may have different norms and values around attraction. So in the previous chapter, we explored that people have different, uh, different cultures have different standards of beauty. No, So for other people, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, particularly in the past, no, ang lotus feet, signifies marriageability or beauty na apoy uban sa sub-Saharan culture kung na ay tattoo o mas beautiful, mas attractive, no? 
So, magadepende siya sa culture, gadepende sa norms, no? And also, when it comes to attraction, there are cultures nga marriage is something that's arranged, no? So, walay freedom ang mga tao sa pagpili sa ilang partner. And ang attraction is something that you learn over time, no? Kaning mga, for example, some parts of India, no, na medyo popular sa ila ang arranged marriage. So, murag, ang attraction is not something that um, murag dili nila gina work out. No? Kay murag once ipare sila, kana ilang, ilan na lang i-learn. So, murag, attraction is not something that they have to explore with other people. Kay na ay ipare sa imo and then kana i-work out na imo ang inyong partnership together. Uh, different cultures and different societies may also put different values on physical characteristics and personality characteristics uh, personality traits okay now this time let's go to sexual identity and soji sexual identity refers to your understanding of your own sexual desires and preferences what do you want to do who who are you in terms of your sexuality no what are your preferences on sa imong gusto um in relation to your sexual desires okay um gender identity and expression as well as sexual orientation are important components of sexual identity mao ni atong gitawag nga soji okay and take note every person na ay soji okay every person um na adjud shay part or ma-describe ni mo ang iyang soji. So, what is this soji really? Soji stands for S. The S stands for sex. O stands for sexual orientation. GI stands for gender identity. And E stands for gender expression. So, as you can see here, you may zoom in this video. Um, let's begin with this orange one, biological sex. Biological sex, or the S in Soji, stands for the sex assigned to the person at birth. So, mauning usually i-assign ng doctor. So, when a baby is born, when penis is obvious, ede, the baby is automatically labeled male. If it's vagina, the baby is automatically labeled a female. And there are cases where um, a baby is born with, you know, with irregularities in sexual development. So when I say irregularities in sexual development, I don't mean abnormality. Okay, just an irregularity. So there are cases where, um, let's say, ang baby na ay parts vagina na apoy parts na penis. So medyo confusing siya kung imulan tawon. And also when you um see inside na apoy aspects ng mga ovary and also um parts ng male reproductive system, these are people who are labeled intersex. Okay? They are born with a typical reproductive anatomy, person having both male and female reproductive organs. But remember, not all intersex individuals are abnormal. Okay, They're able to function well. They're able to live productively in their society. And they're able to lead healthy lives. Okay, So, dili siya necessarily um, kanang irregularity. And I mean, it's not a sign of abnormality. Okay? So, ang soji, um, the S in soji or sex, kaning biological sex, is something that is assigned by other people, therefore. Okay? Because it's obvious sa physical aspect man siya ng body. Okay? Next, let's go to GI. Gender identity. Gender identity is a person's identification of their gender. Unsay iyang pagsabot sa iyang gender, how man or woman or something else he or she is. Okay? Iyang gender identity. Take note. Ang biological sex is something that is dictated by others. So usually doctors or even parents. No? But gender identity, on the other hand, is something that is dictated by the person for him or herself. Okay? Iya ng subjective Ija ng personal, ija ng private, ija ng own view of his or her gender identity. So there are people who are cisgender. 
So, kaning mga tao nga cisgender, they identify as the sex assigned at birth. So, cisgender individuals are those individuals na magmatch ang ilang sex and gender identity. So, maingon sila, I'm a man. And it happens na nagmatch po sa iyang biological sex na naapod siya penis, naapod siya male reproductive system. That is a cisgender man. Naapoy mo ingon, oh, I'm a cisgender woman. So, unsa man ang cisgender woman? A cisgender woman is someone who thinks that she is a woman and naapod siya uh, vagina, naapod siya female reproductive system. So, unsa man ang transgender? Listen, transgender is someone who identifies differently from sex assigned at birth. So there are people um, who are born with a penis, no? who are born with a male reproductive system, but they think, they feel, they identify as a woman. Okay? So in that case, mahimo silang, matawag nato silang transgender. Okay? Remember, Dili kinahanglan na ay sex reassignment surgery. Dili kinahanglan mo undergo um, ng surgery, no mag-sex change para matawag ang tao nga transgender. No. Transgender is just identity. Gender identity. How the person identifies him or herself relative to um, sa kaning iyang biological sex. Okay? So kung consistent, I believe I'm a man. And yes, naapod ko penis. That's cisgender. Pero kung I believe I'm a man, but paglantaw sa akong body, na ako'y vagina, na ako'y fully developed breast, edi, that's a transgender man. Okay? So I hope I'm clear sa kanang aspect. There are people who are gender fluid. So these are people who identi who, whose identity varies over time. Okay, so from the term fluid, uh, flexible sila. There are times na um, they feel like a woman, they feel like a man, or they feel like they have no gender. So those are people who are gender fluid. No? So yeah, that's it. Okay? So maubitaw, ako lang isingit. No, naatay, naatay stay, um, very popular question. Are transgender women women? So, mga babae ba ng mga transgender woman? The answer is, yes, they're females. Or, I mean, they're, they're women. Kaya nga naman, um, when it comes to being a man or being a woman, that's a matter of gender identity. And again, gender identity is something that is subjective. No person should tell us unsay atong identification sa atong kaugalingon. Okay? The only aspect of our sexuality na na ay say ang uban is ang atong biological sex because syempre that's obvious di man na nato ma-deny no that's very that's a physical characteristic if you're a male if you're a female or if you're intersex okay that's why sa atong mga biodata sa atong mga forms very easily um in a straightforward manner kaya nato ma-label oh, male female intersex or kasagaran male female male female because again kana ara atong kaya i-describe sa mga tao the sexual characteristics male or female but when it comes to gender identity it can be very diverse dag high class ng gender identity no so cisgender kanang kasagaran mga tao na um layaki sila na ay penis babae sila na ay vagina and transgender kadtong um nag-identify differently they're, they feel like they're um they feel they're women pero na asila penis so pero mas na asila penis we still call them women we still respect them we still respect their identity as women Okay, the same thing sa mga transgender men. Now, let's go to gender expression. Sa maning gender expression or the GE. 
Um, gender expression refers to how a person presents their gender to the world. So example, in terms of clothing, actions, demeanor, no, let's say manner of speech. So there is mugawas ang katong terms like feminine. So kanang, let's say, um, feminine expressions and qualities na characteristics of a woman na typically atong i-associate sa woman. Uh, masculine expresses the qualities and characteristics of a man. Gender neutral expresses neither masculine or nor feminine and androgynous expresses both masculine and feminine qualities. Ang discussion on gender is um gender expression is a bit complex no tungod kay um pareha sa um physical attractiveness, pareha sa human attraction. Um ang gender expression also is shaped by a lot of cultural and social factors. So there are cases na ang pagka-masculine na ay behaviors na masculine sa isa ka country pero dili siya masculine sa ubang country, no? Sa ubang culture na apoy feminine sa isa ka culture but not feminine in other cultures. So medyo relative siya. So for example, kung magwear kita, kung magwear ng palda ang pagwear ng skirt, wearing skirts, is something that we people, many people think as a feminine gender expression. Okay? Kaya ka ng outward man ni mo nga pag-express, so makita na sa, sa imong pagdala sa imong kaugalingon. But na ay parts of the world na it's normal for men. So many people don't react dito sa laing nasod. Na when men wear skirts, Okay ra, normal. It's not a sign of femininity. Okay? So, kabantay mo, for example, sa sa Hollywood, na si Harry Styles. So, di ba, naa siya mga sanina, nga ga sayal sila, ga palda siya, ga wear siya ng mga, medyo, um, we would say, mga weird na mga clothing. no? Kay ang iyang clothes, mura ginasuot man, typically sa babae. Pero, no people would tell him na, kuan siya na murag um, transgender siya no no kay again anyway it's just ch- gender expression so walay walay definite or straightforward na pagclassify kung unsay feminine unsay masculine unsay gender neutral unsay androgynous lastly na part ng soji is kaning sexual orientation sexual orientation refers to um kaning atong pag-attract no human attraction no? who a person is physically emotionally and or sexually attracted to asa ta maka crush asa ta maganahan asa ta attach emotionally so heterosexual are those people nga ma-attach sila obviously sa mga tao of the opposite gender or sex Okay, so a male person getting attracted to a female individual, obviously, kana heterosexual, no? So the opposite way around, kung a male person ma attract sa female individual, that's also heterosexual. Ang homosexual is when a person gets attached to the pers- to another person of the same sex. So let's say, uh biologically male getting attracted to another person nga biologically male okay um biologically female also getting attracted or getting attached to another person nga biologically female on the other hand we have bisexuals no bisexuals are attracted to both they can be attracted um sa mapa opposite sex man or mapa same sex and pansexual attracted to all genders so wala sila pakialam on side gender nimo and asexual not attracted to anyone so wala siya ma feel na mga any attraction so probably that's related to katong mga attachment styles na atong na mention kaina so one thing that you have to take note about soji is kaning upat these are relatively independent from one another so but ipasabot ana um kung Ang, ang ang biological sex is really dependent from gender identity so do not expect never expect nga mahimo pod siyang cisgender si ba so kay again lahi naman ng gender identity so yes someone may be born female pero pwede siyang mahimong transgender 
kay ang iyang identity mura ga identify siya as a man. So mahimo na siyang transgender man. Karon, kana nga transgender man can be bisexual. So ganahan siya makig-form ng relationship sa both genders or sa both sexes, male and female. And then ang iyang expression gender neutral, no? So grabe kadaghay complex combinations of these sexual identity dimensions. Okay? So, let me share you something and this is something that's real, ha? Na ay, na ay individual in the US, um, the, the person was born um, the person was born female. Okay? So, female iyang biological sex. Pero iyang transgen, ang iyang gender identity, transgender. So, trans man siya. Okay, trans man. So, on sa iyang itsura, so pwede imong ma-imagine na um ah, okay, sorry. Um it's not, dili pa ta mag-itsura kay lahi pang iyang itsura kay gender expression man ang itsura. Basta ang iyang claim, ang iyang identity is transgender siya kay um the person feels like um the person thinks no identifies as a man so therefore we can call that person maskin biologically female siya we can call that person as transgender man karon that person is a drag queen so um ga perform siya sa clubs so as drag queen musuot siya ng mga pambabae mga feminine na mga clothes, magsayal, mag two piece, uh, mag uh, magbutang ng mga prosthetics, magbutang ng mga fake na mga breasts, na mga dagko kaayo. So ang iyang gender expression, in as far as the career of that person is concerned, feminine. So de ba? So murag, medyo nagka cross cross na siya. Uh, female biologically, pero gender identity transgender um ang iyang gender expression feminine so karon ang iyang sexual orientation um i don't know wala ko idea <laughs> so wala man pod niya na express or wala pod na ko mahibal-an so probably it's it's possible na homosexual siya or bisexual but um wala ako kabalo basta all i know is he's a man pero drag queen siya So nga man he man ako gamit kay remember when we use he or she that depends on the person's gender identity. Okay? So di ta mo ingon automatically na he is kuan tungod kay na siya penis. No. We use he or she depending on the person's uh, gender identity. So there are people so actually pwede na nimo ma-explore sa imong kaugalingon what's your soji kay every person has soji every individual na ay soji in terms of biological sex the person may be male pag about sa iyang gender identity the person is cisgender no i think um ang iyang understanding sa iyang identity is he is a man and yes na siya penis so cisgender Inter, uh, cisgender and male. Pero pag abot sa iyang sexual orientation, homosexual siya, ma-in love siya sa kapwa layaki. Pero ang iyang gender expression kay very masculine. So di mo mailhan. Di ba? It's hard to identify anymore kay na ay mga tao na makitid ang understanding kung feeling nila ang gender expression kay feminine na magkembot kembot magkembot kembot automatic makonclude sila na ay homosexual. Homo- ah, no. We should we shouldn't think that way. Kaya ano man, ang kanang pagbehave. Take note that's gender expression and that's different from sexual orientation. So pwede jod. It's possible really for us na makita na very feminine na babae, okay? Pero homosexual. So ma in love siya sa kapwa babae. Very masculine. So gajim daku ang lawas. Masculine nga male. Pero, ma-in love sa kapwa lalaki. That's possible. Okay? And it's also possible na, for example, um, a, a biologically male, no? Ga-engage sa sexual activity sa kapwa biologically male. Pero, heterosexual. Okay? Kay, yeah, that's a, that's a complex conversation na sa, sa gender, no? Na ang... Um, 
um, people are capable of engaging in sexual activities na dili necessary ang sexual activities mag-reflect sa ilang sexual orientation. Okay? So, kung mag-investigate mo further, actually, um, ang sexual orientation, if sure, jud ka sa imong kaugalingon on sa ang imong gusto, if you know you are heterosexual, comfortable ka magpakita ng feminine side, masculine side, no? Okay? You know for sure na dili ka mag-bother, Ana, kung unsay imong unsay isulti sa ubang tao kay again remember gender identity is a matter of kanang imong pag-identify sa imong kaugalingon mismo and nobody is telling you kung unsay imong dapat ma-feel about yourself okay so na anak ko several students in this university na they're openly transgender so na asay name so ang iyang name kay panglayaki jud pero paglantaw sa Google Meet paglantaw sa klase o oh, taas siya hair And then, babae, babae na po na iyang sulti. And I respect that. So, diha na mga points mo, ingon ko, um, um, what's your preferred name? So, kuan baka, magpatawag baka sa imong name na grabe kalayaki. So, example, Alberto. So, syempre, murag ako, ma-awkward na ko mismo, tawagon siya Alberto kay... Um, murag medyo na i disconnect and syempre um pangutanon ko ang tao unsa may imong preferred na name so kung ganahan po siya Alberto lagi pa nang itawag edi sige that's it that's how you respect a person's gender identity okay so try to um analyze your sexual identity asa ka dapat diri sa soji or unsa may imong mga soji dimensions unsay imong soji dimensions okay these are other related terms no related terms sa uh, pagsabot nato sa sexual identities na ay tao nga uh, gitawag nato by gender a person who identifies as both male and female or a combination of both na apod tay gitawag na cis normativity the assumption that cis gender individuals are the norm which can lead to discrimination against transgender individuals so sadly na ay mga tao nga gina-uphold ang cis normativity so para sa ila mas superior ang mga cis gender people So again, unsa gani ang cisgender people? Cisgender people are those who identify as the sex assigned at birth. So kung male sila, they're boys, they're men. Kung female sila, they're women, they're girls. So para sa ila, kana lang ang normal, kana lang ang sakto, kana lang ang correct way of expressing human sexual identity. So that's bad kay ano man, that can lead to discrimination against transgender individuals. Um, next, heteronormativity. The assumption that heterosexuality is the norm. So, mauni ang equivalent po ng cis-normativity. So, naapoy mga heteronormativity na ay mga tao na feeling nila ang normal, ang regular is kanang homosex um, heterosexuality na people getting attracted to others of opposite sex. No, And again, that's that can be problematic because that can lead to discrimination against um, people who identify as homosexuals. Okay? What do we mean by coming out? Coming out is the process of disclosing one's sexual orientation or gender identity to others. So, ala, nag-come out na siya. So, kung naitao nga nag-come out, iyan ang gireveal ang iyang soji publicly so or parts of his or her soji so unsay iyang sexual orientation unsay iyang gender identity so di ba uso na sa mga artista na kinahanglan nila mag come out para mahimong klaro ang expectation ng ilang mga fans sa ila kung um, homosexual ba siya kay syempre mag ka magtuo na ala grabe niya ka masculine or grabe niya ka feminine pero homosexual siya and also Um, sa gender identity na trans di ay siya, no? Gender dysphoria is the distress or discomfort that can arise from a mismatch between a person's gender identity and their assigned sex at birth. Kaning gender dysphoria can be serious um, in some cases. Kay kung very extreme ang kaning distress, mauni ang mag-lead sa more serious mental health issues sa ubang individuals no? na maoy gadyo mag-trigger sa ila na mo undergo ng um, sex reassignment surgery or kanang magpa magpa sex change o kana sa atong usual na term kay siguro atong ma consider atong kaugalingon nga swerte kita no kay we don't we don't experience that no 
but it does it shouldn't excuse us from feeling the sympathy for others kay naa joy mga tao nga um makafeel jud sila disconnection and they really feel na they're a man they're born they're just born in the wrong body so nga man naa man ko itutoy na these are the things that i don't want man na ako kaila ko sa akong brain mismo the way i examine my feelings emotionality whatsoever kabalo ko nga i'm a man pero murag wrong akong body On the other hand, gender dysphoria may also um katong para sa 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 katong sa female version na they they understand ang ilang identity is bae sila, okay? Pero ano man eh, na man sila penis, nga man wala man sila breast. So again, that's gender dysphoria when that is extreme, when that is um when that is severe, that can lead to serious mental health issues and that that is primarily the motivator ng mga transgender individuals na magpa-sex change kay para ma-correct. Okay? Non-binary refers to a person who identifies as neither exclusively male nor exclusively female. Queer is an umbrella term. So, when we say umbrella term, general term na siya, used to describe individuals who do not conform to traditional gender and sexual norms. Transphobia the fear or hatred of transgender individuals which can lead to discrimination and prejudice other terms to gender other terms yeah other term other other terms related to gender identities pa so sorry um let's skip that an ally on summoning ally a person who supports and advocates for the rights of marginalized groups such as lgbtq community so na ay mga tao nga they identify themselves as heterosexual but they feel uh, they protect no they they protect the rights of people who are homosexuals na ginabiktima ng discrimination these people are called the ally or no allies Outing. Samaning outing. Dili ni ka ng mga ligo sa dagat na mag-outing. Outing is the act of revealing someone's sexual orientation or gender identity without their consent. So this is something that I wish to emphasize. Remember, wala tayo karapatan i-out ang ubang tao. Okay? Ang pag-reveal ng gender identity ng any individual or pag-reveal ng iyang sexual orientation, that's the person's story to tell. So, labas ka, Ana. Do not, um, dili ni mo pangunahan na, ay, bayot mana siya. Ay, tomboy mana siya. No. So, muingon ka, ay, transgender mana siya. No. Dili ta mag Because, again, remember, ang gender identity, appeal na ang sexual orientation, these are subjective experiences. Mula ang kita subjective experiences, these are personal na form na develop siya within the person and you have to respect that na sila ray nakabalo sa ilang sexual identity so if you are really curious kung unsa siya ayaw pag ayaw pagbase sa itsura sa iyang sex organ ayaw pagbase sa iyang panamit or sa iyang inistoryahan okay dili ka magbase sa iyang um, clothes sa iyang mannerisms no magbase ka sa iyang own statement mismo kung moingon siya homosexual siya And it, that that's it you take that as truth okay so ayaw mo pag out ha that's one thing na akong gusto na inyong i-observe never out anybody next questioning that's a person who is exploring their gender identity or sexual orientation and has not yet come to a conclusion so ga explore pa siya gender queer and gnc so gnc is gender non conforming so dira ka na ko na i explain. Now this time let's go to sexual ethics, consent and sexual ethics. Consent is the affirmative and enthusiastic agreement to engage in sexual activity. So informed consent on the other hand means that all parties involved, let's say ang layaki or bae or both individuals wala na tay gender na specific or wala na tay sex na specific. All parties involved in sexual activity have a clear and thorough understanding of what they are agreeing to. Okay, so mauni akong, uh, mauni akong um, message sa inyo ha, and this is what I wish to emphasize. The most important element sa tanan forms of sex education is dapat makabalo mo on say consent. Consent is a permission that you give to somebody na mo engage mo on sarakandiha. 
Okay? So, in the context of sexual ethics, informed consent is, ka nang freely, ikaw ang naghatag ng consent na, o oh, sige, mo engage mo, ana, nga sexual activity. Okay? So, for or for everybody, for for all of you nga galisen ani nga lecture video, remember, you have autonomy over your body. You have control over your body. Okay? So, never allow others to control you. Dili tungod kay um, um, imo siyang uyab, crush ni mo siya, or let's say, imo siyang uncle, imo siyang relative, or whatsoever, murag feeling ni mo na ana siya'y control sa imong body? No. Okay? It's you who have control over your body. That's why akong request po sa, sa inyo, especially gentlemen, always seek consent. Pagsabi mo, ganahan ba ka, gusto ba ka, interesado ba ka. Kung ikaw po i-invite, ikaw po hagaron, you also take time to decide, o oh, ganahan ba ko mo, unsa may consequences sa akong anak. Okay? That's the most important aspect of sex education. Understanding that consent is important before engaging in any form of sexual activity. Okay? Kaya nga naman important man siya. So, one importance is it can prevent sexual violence and abuse. Okay? So, dili ka maabusuhan. No? Dili ka ma mamarespetoan ka or morespeto ka. Diba? Kaya siyempre, kung from the start, keep giadyo ang imong consent no kung na i consent and there is full understanding between the two of you kung ya yeah, mo engage mo ana na activity edi so padayon mo diha kay mga adults naman mo nag decide man mo na magbuhat ng ing ana so that's on you okay pero syempre kinsa may capable mag provide ng consent edi dapat ang mga naara po edad let's say mga 18 pataas no So, mauna siya atong ihangyo. Or kung iapila ni mo ng mga religious beliefs, so na ay ilang iingo na ang consent should only be given pag married na. Okay? So, syempre, na apoy other factors diha involved, no? Uh, especially kung ang ang religion mo interact. Sexual health and wellness. Sexu sexual health and wellness refers to the overall physical, emotional, and social well-being related to sexuality. It encompasses a wide range of factors. Appeal na ang sex education, etc., etc. And sex education is an important aspect of sexual health. Kay through that sex education, matagaan ka knowledge and skills on how you make decisions about your sex life. No, or about your sexuality as a whole, no, your sexual identity. Contraception is a tool for preventing unintended pregnancies and protecting against sexually transmitted infections. We have hormonal methods, barrier methods, long-acting reversible methods. Then ako ani mag enumerate because I'm sure you have your way of knowing these things. Kaya you're capable of using Google on some pills, on some condoms, on some IUDs. But this is one thing I wish to emphasize that abstinence is the best form of contraception kay kung dili pa jud siya sakto sa oras wala pa di pa mo ready edi ayaw ayas mag-engage ana no so when you abstain that involves a conscious effort na di jud ka asa mo engage ana because you know na ay perfect time for that na ay right time to engage in sexual activities so ayaw mo pataka-taka pag engage so kay kung mag-engage mo daghay danger aside from let's say unintended na mga pregnancies um pwede pa ka makakuha ng mga STDs or sexually transmitted infections so mao ni ang common na mga STIs chlamydia gonorrhea HPV herpes syphilis and HIV AIDS so these are the common symptoms ng chlamydia and gonorrhea mao ri akong makaya ipakita. So you may post this lecture video if you wish to look or examine unsa ni na mga symptoms. Now, I cannot do the entire part of sex education, no? Kay murag dili siya kaya ng lecture video. Kay it's also a very big and broad topic. So I invite you to watch sex education in Netflix because siya so far ang pinaka the best na Um, form of media para sa pag-deliver ng sex education. And ako mismo, galantaw ana ng Netflix show, Netflix film, sex education. It's a series. I think it's on its third season now. 
Um, the show, you will learn, these are the lessons that you will learn from watching the show. Importance of communication, part na sa sex education, diversity of sexual experiences, impact of social pressure, importance of consent. Yeah, naapoy consent dito na isa ka episode and I really, really appreciate that particular episode. Um, consequences of unsafe sex, trauma, uh, impact of trauma, um, the complexity of identity, importance of self-discovery, and many, many more. Okay, so that's really a fun show, and I'm really glad that Netflix made that show because mahimo nang accessible ang sex education for everyone. And sa diha po diha pa kama kabalong wholesome ang sex education dili siya bastos. Okay. Now, let's go to the last part of the lecture video, and that's about romantic relationships. Sexuality and romantic relationships are closely related. No? Kay when you are involved in a romantic relationship, pwede naapod mo'y ginabuhat ng mga sexual activities. Pero dili pasabot na when you are involved in a romantic relationship, dapat na anay sexual activity. Dili na necessary. Okay, so the idea here is they may be connected with each other, and si Robert Sternberg nagpropose siya na ang love daw, ang human relationship, ang romant, ang romance, no, ang 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 kanang romantic relationship may be broken down into three components or naasay three elements. Intimacy. So ang intimacy, as you can see in the image, that indicates closeness or friendship. So, kung let's say na amoy uyab, no, you are in a romantic relationship. You know you are in the right romantic relationship. Kung close mo, friend jud mo, na amoy intimacy. You can spend, ah, makashare mo secrets sa isat isa. You can talk mga all night long. So kanang kanang magistorya hay mo about kinabuhi or maskin unsarakan. That's intimacy. Um, second component is passion. That is when you are sexually drawn to each other. So na amoy sexual attraction sa isat isa or tili necessarily or na literal na sexual attraction, but physical attraction. No, so you like each other physically, okay? And then lastly, um, decision or commitment. That is the uh, decision to um kanang mo commit sa isat isa. Okay, na kanang magstay ka mo sa isat isa. That's the third component. And according to Robert Sternberg, kaning tolo ka components when combined with each other, magform siya ng different forms of love. Magcreate siya ng different forms of love. For example, let's start there is a tunga sa center intimacy plus passion plus commitment. So kung present ang tolo ka elements, that's what we call a consummate love. Okay, kung companionate love lang, so from the term companionate, mo rag panag-iban ra as companion. Unsa may present na amo intimacy, you are close. Tapos na ay commitment. So usually kaning companionate love, poy disad ni makita sa best friendship. Why best friend kami? Tili kami kung sexually attracted to each other, pero close me and we're committed na magstay me together as friends. Okay. So na ay iban nga close lang mo so na alay intimacy so ang tawag ana liking so i like you so ga chika ta we like each other ang romantic love that's intimacy plus fa- passion no sa karang mga nang grave romantic love a close ka mo sa isa't isa plus grabe ka kusog ang passion grabe ka kusog ang sexual attraction so that's romantic love pero kung puro ra passion puro ra Purora, kung sa panay, purora sexual attraction. No, I crush ka dyan na ako si Ja. So, maunang mga infatuation or infatuated love. So, nga naman makakrush mang kaana kay naakay physical attraction. Dili good mo close. Wala po mo'y commitment sa isa't isa. Pero naakay gibati sa iya. So, kung sa may mong gibati, pure passion. So, that's infatuation. Mauna ang mga crush ninyo. Nga man, crush mo na nimo kay naakay na feel na physical attraction. Kung naay passion and commitment walay intimacy that's a fatuous love pero kung puro ra pod commitment uban ra mo oh that's empty love okay dili mo magistoryahay wala pod may sexual attraction pwede. that's empty love okay now these are the main ideas of this presentation 
So that's the end already of the lecture video. Remember, human sexuality is complex. Dagan siya factors. Ang attraction also na ay biological, um, psychological, social, and cultural. And also, there's a role of soji in shaping our sexual identity. Na ang sexual identity is very complex, no? Kay daghan siya dimensions na asay na asay sex or being male, female, na po siya gender identity, um, gender expression, and sexual orientation. And also, it's important to prevent sexual violence and abuse through sexual ethics. And the most important topic under sexual ethics is when to give or how to give consent. No? Na before engaging in sexual activities, be sure that you seek informed consent from all parties na sila kabalo on sa consequences sa ilang buhaton. So, mo engage mong sexual activity na alaw, wala raba ko kabalo kung HIV positive ko or dili kay na araba ko na engage dyan sa una na medyo murag na asya'y sakit, tingali. So, kana, these are the considerations na imong isipon before engaging in um, sexual activities. Also, the importance of sexual health and wellness including sex education. Okay, so ang sex education again dilit na kabastusan ha. That's educating the person para mahimong responsible sa iyang choices in terms of his or her sexuality, and also in terms of kanang pagprotect sa iyang kaugalingon from abuses. And that's it. That's the lecture video on the sexual self, human sexuality, soji, and relationships. And these are the questions which you may use for student reflection for reflection after the content. Thank you so much for watching this lecture video.